Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be talking about the harm you know brought to a child. So if this is something that you feel might be triggering for you, then I would recommend that you switch off and come back, you know, in another video. Disclaimer as well. I have researched this case as much as I can. I've read at least 12 different sources. So I've compiled information from all of them and I'm just putting it into one video. I will also be putting them in the description box below so you can go check them out for yourself as well. I am also going to be using clips from a video from an interview of the subjects involved. And if you're happy to be watching this and those clips are muted, it's because I may have been copyrighted and I had to mute them. But the link to that video, the entire video will be in the description box below. So you can check it out if you choose to after this video, of course. Let's get into it. Jaden Mark Anthony Bernard was born on September 20th, 2007. He was a healthy baby. He was seven pounds, one ounce. He was born at Etobicoke General Hospital to parents, Richard Williams and Nadine Bernard. Now here's the kicker. Richard had been married or was married for 19 years to his wife, Joy Williams. He had met Nadine at Briggs Canada where they worked together and they carried on an affair in some sources, it said that their affair was for four years. And in one source, I read that Nadine's mother said the affair was five to six years. So I'm not sure how long the affair actually was, but it was long enough for them to conceive a child. Now, like I said, Jaden was born in September of 2007, but his wife didn't find out about Jaden until July of 2008. In July of 2008, she was going through some paperwork for Richard and found the christening card. There was Jaden's picture on it, his name, you know, Jaden, Mark Anthony, and that's what, you know, kind of triggered it for her because Richard's middle name is Mark Anthony. He was at work that day and she called him up. She's like, who's Jaden? And he admitted it. I had an affair and Jaden is my son, but the affair was still ongoing at that point because it didn't end until, you know, Joy, made the call and that same day, actually when he got off the phone with Joy, he called Nadine and said, my wife has found out about the affair. She knows about Jaden. And he would say in that same interview, I'm gonna insert the clip here now. He thought that when he got home, that his clothes would have been put out. My wife found out about Jaden because she found his christening card brochure and saw the picture of Jade and by the name, which is my middle name that he had, she called me at the office and said, who is Jaden? When I arrived at home, I was coming expecting to see everything thrown out of the house. Even though Jaden was kept a secret for the first few months of his life, Richard actually provided for him. He would see him on weekends or whenever his wife was at work because Joy was a pediatric maternity nurse. And we all know nurses usually work long shifts, like 10, 12 hours. So whenever she was at work, he would spend time with Jaden. He would take him to doctor's appointments. He even enrolled him in daycare, which the daycare was in the office building where him and Nadine worked. So it's not like he wasn't being a good father to, to Jaden. He was, you know, standing up and doing the right thing. His wife just never knew about it. He also had two kids with Joy. He had an 11 year old son and a 17 year old daughter. Nadine also had two children as well, an 11 year old daughter and a 14 year old daughter. Now, so much secrets going around shortly after Jaden was born, Richard and Nadine took a trip to Jamaica so that Jaden could be introduced to his grandparents, Richard's parents that live there. So a lot of people knew about Jaden's existence and the relationship routine between uh, Richard and Nadine, except for his wife. But then she found out and allegedly the affair was over. And surprisingly, Joy asked to meet Jaden. She wanted to meet Jaden. And Jayden. I called Nadine. Jade's mom. I said, 
can you bring Jaden? Because Joy would like to see Jaden. When he called Nadine and said, Joy wants to meet, Joy was his, his wife's name. I think I already said that. When he called her and said that Joy wants to meet Jaden, she didn't have an issue with it. She allowed it to happen. And Jaden actually went over to their house several times a week. I'm not sure if he spent weekends or anything like that, but he went over there several times a week. After Nadine realized, I guess, that Joy wasn't leaving, that she was working through it, she was sticking by her ma marriage. And I'll insert a clip here where, you know, they, they both talk about it, Joy and Richard. And if you happen to be watching this video and those segments are muted, it's because I was copyrighted and I had to mute them. So yeah, she became a part of Jaden's life. And when her friends and family, you know, the rest of the family found out about everything, they would ask her like, how, how are you working through this? How do you accept this? And she would go on to say, because my children need their, their father. I still need my husband, you know, and he's a baby. I love babies. Look at my job, look where I work. How could I love babies and not love this particular baby? You know, despite of how he was conceived and how he came into the world, I can't victimize him, you know? And this is a situation that would end a lot of marriages, but she, she wanted to work through it. And, you know, like I said, she became incorporated. She was a part of Jaden's life, but then Nadine started to have an issue with it. I think maybe in her head that when she allowed Jaden to go over, maybe Joy would not be able to deal with it and would leave and then her and Richard would be together. I don't know. But after a while, she began to stop Jaden from going over to their house. She didn't want Richard to be a part of his life or anything like that. He was such a sweetheart and he looked like all his baby pictures. Like, felt hurt, but just to see the beautiful baby, it was like, oh my God. It was hard trying to absorb Jaden knowing how he came into the world, but Jaden was an innocent baby and the child can't be victimized. And I, he just, he reminded me of him. He's just a child that you couldn't ask, stop but loving. Like he was just a beautiful, happy child. She started letting him come visit regularly. And then For when she, I guess, realized that I wasn't moving out and I was dealing with this and I was loving Jaden. She started to try to say that I was doing bad things to Jaden. I was accepting what had gone on. We had dealt with the situation between us and moved on to kind of absorbing Jaden into our family. And that wasn't going well in her eyes. So she stopped allowing him to come to the And house. in October of 2008, she filed two police reports with the police stating that Joy was harassing her, sending her harassing letters and emails. But those cases never came about. November 25th, 2008, that was the last day that Richard and Joy saw Jaden. Because like I said, she had cut complete ties off. She didn't want any involvement. In December of 2008, Richard filed for joint custody and visitation rights in the courts. March 2009, March 11th, 2009, the day before the court order was granted that gave him visitation rights, Nadine mentioned to a friend, I will rather kill my son than allow Richard and Joy to have joint custody. She mentioned this to a friend slash co-worker that also work at Brings Canada, but nothing was ever said. I guess they never took it seriously. And I keep, there's so many points in this case I keep forget. Richard alleges that he tried to end the affair with Nadine prior, but she would always threaten to tell his wife or threaten to tell their work that they were in a See, relationship. If I get out, she would call my home and tell my wife. The next thing that she would use is that she would tell my and wife. Some companies, a lot of companies actually have a policy where co-workers aren't allowed to be in relationships, or I'm guessing that maybe he was her superior. But anyways, back to it. So March 11th, she made that statement that she would rather kill her son. March 12th, that was when the order was granted where Richard was supposed to get visitation rights to Jaden. He was supposed to see him twice a week. So the lawyers... Um, Nadine's lawyer and Richard's lawyer got together and made an agreement that they will meet at a mutual place. 
they'll meet at, at a local McDonald's to either they that's where Richard would see him or that's where they will exchange custody. Nadine didn't comply with any of those. On March 23rd, 2009, she decided to quit her job at Brings Canada. And three days after, she went to Home Hardware, she purchased a 10 foot hose and duct tape. And she drove to one Robert Speck Parkway. That's where, you know, in the building where they, they worked. She went into the parking garage at approximately 9.36 AM, she drove down and it's caught on surveillance tape. I, I don't think that the courts released that part of it, but 9.36 AM, she drove down into the garage and she finally parked in a spot at about 11.36 AM. And they can see where she took the hose, placed it on the back of her muffler, and then put the hose into the side of the car where Jaden was in his car seat in the back. And then she got back in the car and she stayed there the entire day, the entire night. March 27th now, the next morning at 7.51 AM, Nadine placed a call to 911. And I'm not exactly sure what was said, but they told her to proceed with CPR and she refused. She said, Jaden's already dead. Doesn't make sense. I'm not going to do it. When police arrived, they found, they came in. Jaden was disoriented. Jaden sadly had passed away. The plan was for a murder suicide, but clearly the carbon monoxide didn't take effect on Nadine as it did on Jaden. So that's where the, you know, she was disoriented. She was confused. She had, or I think I already mentioned this, she had urinated on her clothes and all of that. So they took her to hospital first. And that morning when Richard got to work, the parking garage, you know, was blocked off by police tape. And he asked what's going on, but police wouldn't, you know, reveal anything at that time. A few hours later though, he did receive a call letting him know that his son was found in the parking garage of where he worked dead. And I don't even want to imagine what that phone call would have been like, you know, because even though Jaden was born into this complicated situation. He was an innocent baby. He was loved by a lot of people. His father did love him. His father was being a part of his life. He was trying to still be a part of his life. Otherwise he wouldn't have went to court to try to get visitation and all of that. But like I said, I don't even want to imagine what that was. When he was buried, they had two separate, um, not funeral because he was cremated. They had, they had two separate memorials. So Richard's side of the family had their own when they did the cremation. This was done on April 4th. And then about a week later, Nadine's family did their own memorial because the families were not coming together at all. Nadine was charged with first degree murder and she was remanded in court and finally, so this happened in 2009, on January 14th of 2011, she pled guilty to second degree murder. She was given, I believe it was life in, in, um, life in, in jail, but in Canada, there's no such thing as, as life. So it's more like 25 to life. So after 20 years, and this is conflicting again, because in a couple of sources, I've seen 20 and then in a couple of sources, it says 10 years. So either way, whatever it is, after she serves that amount of time, she can apply for parole. And most likely it will probably be granted because you know, the lawyers tell you what to do. Make sure you take classes, make sure you apologize when you go before the parole board. So she'll get out at some point. She still has her life now. now so that's the end of the case i haven't seen any further updates um about how she's doing in prison or anything like that um she will eventually come up for parole but i would love to know her thought process i would love to know what she's thinking now like does she regret it like you took the life of your son 
to get back at his father. You know, like I understand she, she was hurt, you know, the circumstances, but at the same time, she chose to get into a relationship with this married man, just like how he chose to get into a relationship with her. What do you think was going to happen at some point? You know, the truth was going to come, even though they didn't have a, a Jaden at some point, the truth would have been revealed to his wife. At what point did you, did you think that he was going eight times out of 10 when a man cheats, when he's married and he cheats, he stays with the wife. He will talk the worst about his wife to the mistress, but then he'll always stay with his wife. I mean, it's just, that's just how it's written. It's, you know, that's how in history, that's how it's been. So I don't know why you would, some woman would think, oh, I'll, I'll be the changing the deciding factor. I'm going to make him leave his wife and be with me and whatever. And then when it's not done, they get vindictive. And in this particular case, an innocent child lost his life. And it's an innocent child lost his life. Yes, it may have hurt the father. Yes, it may have hurt Richard, but guess what? He's free and still being married. Well, I don't know if he's still married now. I'm going to assume, you know, he gets to live his life, still being free, still being with his wife and you are locked up in jail, probably hunted by the act that you took because how could you not? How do you sleep at night? I would love to know what her thought process is. And I know it sounds bad and people might, oh, you don't judge, whatever, whatever, but she took an innocent, Jaden would have been 14 years old this year, September 20th, which is just a couple of months. He would have been 14, you know, like, but I don't even want to go on and on about this. This is all that I have on this case. It's a sad story and I don't know, it could have been avoided because the same friend that she told I'm going to kill him instead of, you know, Richard and his wife getting drug custody that same friend testified in court to that you know so maybe if she had spoken up and said something i i don't know but this is a case where lessons can be learned to those that choose to see the lessons in it you know when someone says something like that you take them seriously you, you take them seriously but it's it's just a sad story and i hope her daughter's have grown up to be amazing and they're doing great in life despite the circumstances like none of this was their fault I know children tend to take on the blame and say oh it must have been but they were totally innocent in all of this you know two grown adults decided to get into a relationship and sadly this was the end result and so many other people are affected by it but I hope her thoughts torture her every night. But <laughs> let me know what you think about this story. All the links I said will be in the description box. And I'll see you guys in the comments.